1970 Ford Mustang. And just call this thing Bruce Springsteen because it's the boss. Born in the USA. Born in the USA. As you may have noticed, this car is of the 302 cubic inch V8 variety. And that engine was an absolute tiny terror. It came with four bolt mains, a forged steel crank, solid lifters, and from the factory, a 6200 RPM rev limiter. With a little bit of tweaking, these things can safely rev to 7,000. <laughs> The boss also came with competition suspension, front disc brakes, reinforced shock towers, a front spoiler, and a rear deck wing. Not to mention the absolutely awesome stripe kit. Compression ratio of that V8 was 10 and a half to one, and it was rated 290 horsepower and 290 pound-feet of torque. <laughs> Inside you'll find a 4-speed manual transmission because that's all you could get with the Boss 302. So suck it, automatic lovers. Uh. Out back, 350 gears would have been standard, but this car is a very slight upgrade. It's got a little bit more aggressive ratio of 486 gears. This Mustang's fairly lightweight with driver 3,476 pounds. The Boss 302 was a decent value in 1970. It started out at 3,720 bucks. Then the traction lock rear was another $43, and if you wanted a tack, that was $54. Bucks. Gives you a total of $3,817, and adjusting for inflation, that's just over $29,000 today. And who wouldn't buy that? Though I might have to pass it up for the Nissan Leaf, because, like I always say, nothing says performance like up to 121 MPGE. <laughs> Am I right? These cars aren't terribly rare, but they're not that common either. There were 7,013 total Boss 302s produced in 1970. Why don't we check out out a Mustang commercial from that year. Hey, tell me, what, oh, excuse me. <laughs> tell me, what, what gives you the your biggest kicks? Well, number one? Yeah, which one? <laughs> Mustang. Yeah. Whoa, commercials were a little different back then. Hot Rod Magazine tested a Boss 302 with 391 gears in January of 1970. Shifting at 7,000 RPM, they were able to run a best of 1480 at 96.35 miles per hour. They noted that the Boss lacked some low-end torque, but it was the best handling Ford that they had ever driven. Let's see if its opponent can rope in that Mustang. 1978 Chevrolet Corvette 25th Anniversary Special Edition. And I just can't wait to hear the complaints of... That's a smog era car, And yes, the base engine that year, the L48350, was a little bit of a turd sandwich with 185 horsepower. But if you checked the right boxes like this car, then you got the L82, which was still a 350 cube V8, but this one had an aluminum intake manifold, a dual snorkel air cleaner, four bolt mains, forged steel crank, larger valves, a low restriction exhaust, and a slightly more aggressive cam than the L48. The term aggressive is used very loosely here. Just like your mom. Compression ratio was 8.9 to 1, and it was rated 220 net horsepower, which is not bad for 1978, and 260 pound-feet of torque. The 25th anniversary cars also featured two-tone paint, a gray interior, which could either be leather or the very rare cloth with leather bolsters, limited edition decals, and aluminum wheels with a red stripe. And that red stripe makes it extra special. And I think we all know that Chevrolet guys, they... Just love to feel special and be pampered. <laughs> am I right or am I right? <laughs> Losers. And yes, that's a joke. For Pete's sake, this is the car that I restored last year. And yes, this is a humble brag about how awesome that car is. So you can suck my fat <laughs> And most people recognize these cars because of the door decals, which were actually applied at the dealership at the buyer's request. So as you can see, some of the cars just did not have those decals placed. Frankly, I'm a fan of both, so I guess you could say that I go both ways. Wait a minute. Inside, you'll find a three-speed automatic transmission, but a four-speed manual was available. And then out back with the automatic equipped Corvette, you only had one rear gear set available, and that was 355. This Corvette isn't too heavy, but it's not the lightest car either. With driver, it came in at 3,600 pounds even. And like my girlfriend would say when I walk around without any pants on, meh. Corvettes were quite expensive in 1978. The base model started out at just over $9,300, but if you wanted the 25th anniversary special edition, that was gonna cost you 13,653 bucks and adjusting for inflation that's $62,152 today. Jeez, that is like straight up drug money. Say hello to my little friend. Wait a minute. Say hello to my little friend. 
Tony must have been a Corvette owner. <laughs> right? <laughs> Tiny meat gang represent. <laughs> Even with that steep price tag, the 25th anniversary cars sold quite well. There were 6,502 in total. Road and Track Magazine tested one of these Corvettes in April of 1978. Theirs had a four-speed manual transmission with 370 rear gears, and it went 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds, and the quarter mile in 15.2 seconds at 95 miles per hour. Let's see what these cars will do today. 78 Corvette 350. 2,377 miles from home. Take a walk. Or touch the Corvette 1515 at 90 miles an hour. the car. In the first round, it's the Corvette that takes home the win, running 15.15 seconds at 90.75 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Mustang ran 15.37 seconds at 94.03 miles per hour. Why don't we check out round two? Neil Overly out of Monroeville, Indiana, 70 Mustang In the second round, it is again the Corvette that takes home the win, running 15.23 seconds at 89.97 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Mustang ran 16.11 seconds at 90.18 miles per hour. And with that, the Corvette takes home the best of three title, but you know what they said? I'm having a good time. I'm going to run that third round anyway. Unfortunately, the Mustang said, nah, I'm good. But let's check it out anyway. In the final round, the Corvette runs 15.45 seconds at 87.38 miles per hour. Huge thanks to the owners for bringing out these cars. It was awesome seeing them on the drag strip. I'll catch you guys at the next one.